Hey folks, welcome back. Gosh, it's that time of year again, isn't it? A time for family, giving, coming together, getting mad at people over semantics, getting mad at people over music, getting mad at people over decorations, getting mad on other people's behalf, getting mad at people over... That's right, it's the holiday season. Time of year where snow covers the ground and everybody comes together to not only reflect on the year past, but also to celebrate giving and compassion. Personally, my favorite thing about the season is my annual pilgrimage back to that video of Bjork in a hotel room dissecting her CRT and talking about how all the little pieces inside it look like cities and about a, a comedian or, or whatever. This looks like a city, like a little model of a city, very gay. But let's be honest here, the real meaning of Christmas is spending as much time away from your family as possible and watching TV specials and movies. Oh yes, the television Christmas special. Seems like no matter how dark and serious your show is, there's some stuck-up dickhead in a suit who's never interacted with a real human being before, insisting that a time slot be reserved for a very walking dead Christmas. I mean, why not, right? The holiday season is a money grab for pretty much every industry. Why shouldn't Hollywood grab the opportunity to make a quick buck with their slimy, sin-ridden hands? Perhaps even more intriguing than TV Christmas specials are Christmas films. Movies that exist purely to be watched during the build-up to Christmas, and would really just be weird to watch any other time of the year. Like honestly, if you know someone who watches Rudolph at any other time other than Christmas, cut them out of your life, they're going to steal your social insurance number. You would think that since these movies are only really notable for one month out of the year, they wouldn't be that successful, but some of the most beloved movies of all time are Christmas movies. A Christmas Story, Die Hard, Home Alone, and don't even get me fucking started on Hallmark movies, Jesus Christ. Who am I, Jenny Nicholson? But this year I'm going with a perhaps lesser known Christmas movie to look at. Not obscure by any means, but I wouldn't say it's on the same tier as a lot of really well-known Christmas movies. Strap in kids, today we're looking at this. Look, I'm not gonna go on Amazon and get a DVD copy of all of the other reindeer for a YouTube video. Like I'm just not, I'm not gonna do that. All of the other reindeer, a movie so nice they named it. It's a made-for-TV Christmas movie which first aired on December 17th, 1999. It's based on a series of children's books written by Vivian Walsh and illustrated by J. Otto Siebold, the titular character of which is actually Vivian's real-life Jack Russell, Olive. How cute is that? This movie may seem like a throwaway kids movie, but it must have been a pretty big deal when it came out. It was produced by Simpsons and Futurama creator Matt Groening's company, The Curiosity Company, and has a relatively star-studded cast, including Ed Asner, Dan Castaneda, Tim Meadows, Joe Pantoliano, REM vocalist Michael Stipe, and mind-blowingly Drew Goddamn Barrymore in the leading role as Olive. I feel like I don't need to say this, but the name is a cute little homage to the line in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You know, all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. Olive. All of. I, have you gotten it? Have I spoon-fed it to you enough? So right off the bat, our protagonist is not only a liar in that she's not a reindeer, but in fact a dog, She's also famous for bullying Rudolph and his severe facial deformity. Really good message to be given the kids, Mrs. Barrymore. Maybe you should bury less, you know what I'm saying? This movie was on TV a lot when I was a kid, back in the early 2000s. So I think it's fair to say that most people my age probably have some kind of attachment to it. However, I have never seen this movie before. I don't know why. I guess I just never caught it when it was on TV. But I like that, because it means that I can go into this movie with a clean slate. I'm sure that you're all looking for highly critical analysis of a stupid children's Christmas movie. So let's go, baby. Merry fucking Christmas. It's All of the Other Reindeer, produced by Alex Jones. The movie begins with a cute little musical number about how much Olive loves all holidays, but loves Christmas most of all. And Drew Barrymore can't sing too well, but, you know, that's okay, neither can I. Olive is just a sweet, friendly little Jack Russell Terrier who's nice to everyone and loves spreading the joy of Christmas. In the opening scene, she sees a family of mice who are shopping for a Christmas tree, but they can't find one because all the ones in the lot are too big. So Olive gives them a little pine tree car air freshener. Not even two minutes in and I would already lay down my life for Olive. Off the bat, the first thing you probably notice is the really weird animation style. All the characters have this kind of strange, bouncy look to them. It's very minimalist, and it's pretty much the exact art style that J. Otto Siebold uses in the books. If I had to compare it to something else, I would say that it kind of reminds me of Parappa the Rapper, where all the characters have this sort of flat design to them. Although they're not intended to look like they're made out of paper like in Parappa, they are 3D characters, at least in the context of the movie. It's certainly a weird aesthetic, and it's kind of off-putting at first, but once you actually watch the characters move, it's kind of cute and stylized. It gives the movie a unique look that makes it memorable. 
On the other hand though, half of this movie is animated with this weird Jimmy Neutron looking late 90s 3D animation and it just makes everything look kind of weird and low poly. Like I know they were limited at the time since it was the 90s and 3D animation wasn't you know, all there, but I think it would have been a lot more visually appealing if everything was just 2D animated. But overall, I will say that the animation is very cute. I very much respect the decision to use J. Otto Siebold's art style rather than making a whole new one entirely. Anyway, enough critical analysis of a children's movie. The next character we meet is Martini, played by Joe Pantoliano. A snide little penguin with a New Yorker accent who Olive meets while he's selling counterfeit Rolex watches at an alley. Olive heads home and gets scolded by her owner, Tim, because she doesn't act like enough of a dog? Yeah, for some reason he's upset because she doesn't have fits of barking or dig up the neighbor's gardens. The absolute nerve of her. I don't know about you, but Olive sounds pretty great to me. My dog mostly just has barking fits and eats garbage. Anyway, Tim says that there's not going to be a Christmas this year. Olive seeks comfort in her pet flea, Fido. <laughs> get it? Because he, he's a pet and we, we name dogs, we usually name dogs Fido, but he's a... He's a dog's pet, and he so his he his name. Ever since he was tiny, Tim has loved Christmas. Haha, <laughs> get it, tiny Tim? Like I'm just kidding. I actually really like these gags. This movie has a very good sense of humor. Anyway, Fido and Olive listen to the radio and hear that Santa is potentially considering canceling Christmas this year because Blitzen has suffered an injury. Santa says that he might have to make do with all of the other reindeer. Fido mishears Santa saying all of the other reindeer rather than all of the other reindeer and becomes convinced that Olive is not actually a dog but in fact a reindeer and also that Santa needs Olive to travel to the North Pole to take over for Blitzen. Tim comes by to apologize about yelling at Olive and says that he was upset about Christmas being canceled and took it out on her. I'm not sure if they were trying to make it seem as though Fido was genuinely mishearing Tim while relaying information to Olive, but it seems more like he's just straight up gaslighting Olive into believing that Tim doesn't love her anymore and is getting a new dog. And if that's the case, Jesus Christ, Fido, what the fuck is your damage, bro? My God. Anyway, Olive becomes convinced that the only way she can regain Tim's love is to fulfill her destiny as a fill-in reindeer on Santa's sleigh. On her way to catch a bus to the North Pole, Olive absolutely f***ing bodies the main antagonist of the film, a grumpy mailman played by the voice of Homer Simpson, Dan Castanoletta. The mailman does a little musical number about how much he hates Christmas since, you know, it makes his job difficult and stuff. Olive tells the mailman of her plan to save Christmas and he spends the rest of the movie attempting to stop her on her way. Olive and Martini make it to a bus transfer station to stop and eat, but the mailman captures her. Lucky for her, there's a package in the back addressed for her from Deus Ex Machina that allows her to escape. That's so funny. This is the best movie ever made, I I've decided. Just give up. Just stop making movies, it's over. She escapes the mailman, but unfortunately misses her bus as a result. Her and Martini walk into a bar that I'm pretty sure I went to in Orlando once, and she uses her being a protagonist skills to win over the rugged, violent bar patrons. After a musical number by the guy from R.E.M., the bar owner, Round John Virgin, decides to drive her to the North Pole. They're not initially able to get into Santa's property, but Martini creates a diversion to allow Olive to sneak in. With relative ease, Olive manages to convince Santa to let her take Blitzen's place. Despite all the postman's efforts to thwart Olive, he ends up switching Santa's sack with one full of junk mail, taking all the toys with him. We learn that his motivation does in fact fall into a category of stereotypical Christmas movie villain, as he expositions that part of the reason he hates Christmas is because Santa has been putting him on the naughty list, which probably partially has to do with the fact that he's an irredeemable prick at all times. Like, come on, man, that's how, that's how, that's how Christmas works, you don't know this? Olive uses her dog nose to sniff out the mailman, and just when it seems like all is lost, our boy Martini pulls through and causes the mailman to swerve into the snow, allowing Santa and the gang to retrieve the gifts. From here on, it's just a feel-good musical montage of Santa delivering presents to cities all over the world, and all the good guys are happy in the end. And thus ends the tale of all of the other reindeer, and I f***ing love this movie. I don't know what it was about this movie, but I just kind of gravitated away from it as a kid. It's a lot of the reason I never saw it. When I was a kid, I, I was kind of picky about animation styles that I thought were ugly or whatever. I'm glad that it's something I grew out of. From the outside, this movie does look kind of weird with the strange animation style, but once you get really into it, it's really stylized and cute. 
It's not just a stupid passable kids movie, it's actually a very cute story about a purely lovable little dog who just wants to do her part to save Christmas. Martini is a good comedic sidekick who gets a little redemption arc at the end, and all the other characters who help out Oliver are lovable in their own ways. I mean, you know, Schnitzel didn't, there wasn't really a need for him. I'm pretty sure they just wanted to put him in because they wanted the guy from R.E.M. to do a song, but whatever. One of the things that blew me away about this movie is how funny and clever it was. From start to finish, this movie is jam-packed with silly gags and actually pretty smart jokes. There's a lot of good writing going on here. So in the end, if you wanted me to sum up my opinion, I guess I'd have to say, Olive this movie. Anyway, I hope you had a good time watching me talk about a Christmas movie. If you're celebrating some sort of holiday, I hope it's wonderful. And if you're not, I hope you get a few days off work. And if you don't have a job, you should get one. Your mom really worries about you. And you know what? In celebration of the holidays, what do you say we open up a little early Christmas present? Don't tell Jesus. Oh boy. Christmas with the Cranks on DVD. That's not even the right movie, but...